Yeah, my dear students, welcome to JK Shah's classes. Today we are going to revise Group Two, Paper Five, Advanced Accounting, November two thousand twenty-three, RTP. Myself, Professor Gaurav, and I will be revising this RTP today. So let's start. Now, friends, Advanced Accounting. dissolution of firm there are in all 20 questions which we need to discuss in which the first one is dissolution of partnership firm pqrs are sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 3 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1 frauds committed by r during the year were found out and it was decided to dissolve the partnership on 31st march 2023 and their balance sheet was as under you see there are frauds which are committed the same type of question uh, the third question is there in our book also what i would tell you is if frauds are committed and because of that there is a dissolution we need not do rectification before dissolution we need to do rectification during dissolution only yeah so many of you might be having that uh, sir we need to do first rectification and then we need to do dissolution so we will be getting that adjusted capital and all those things no my dear friends it is not that way in this of course this question is somewhat of different also i'll come on this but here i just would like to make you remember the point that first rectification then new balance sheet and then we go no Huh? we are not supposed to make the balance sheet before dissolution and then go for accounting for dissolution because this dissolution is happening on account of frauds committed by one of the partner so the effect of the rectification will be given during dissolution process only so there will be no impact on the capital account balance now liabilities and assets capital pqrs general reserve trade creditors bills payable building stock investment debtors cash and our current account now here our current account is given our capital is not there only so somewhere or the other what about p q and s current account it it seems like they are zero balance the current account is having zero balance and hence what should we do capitals account are fixed fixed capital method hmm? following information is given to you a check of 14000 received from debtor was not recorded in the books and misappropriated by r so can i say will pass an entry that r we have to receive it from r and the credit will be realization account investment costing 16000 were sold by r at 22000 and the funds transferred to his personal account so can i say again same will debit r and credit our realization account by 22000 Creditor agreed to take over investments at book value of eighteen thousand at rupees twenty six thousand. The rest of the creditors were paid off at a discount of five percent. The other assets realized building stock. The investments were sold at a profit of fourteen thousand. The rest of the debtors were realized at ten percent discount. The bills payable were settled at a discount of thousand. The expense of dissolution amounts to sixteen thousand. It was found that. Realization from our private assets would be only fourteen thousand. So there is an insolvency which is coming. Prepare realization account, cash account, partners capital account, and all working should form part of your answer. Now, friends. So all these things are there. I'll just go one by one with respect to the adjustments, and then we can say check of fourteen thousand received from debtor. So we need to do two effects. Our capital account will be debited. and the second effect would be where nothing but my realization account ha huh? don't do rectification before uh, dissolution because this rectification will happen during dissolution because dissolution is happening because of fraud committed by r same way the investments the second point was there which is nothing but 22000 done so r account will be debited and realization account will be created i am not talking about the normal processes which we you do that is nothing but uh, sir capital account balance will be transferred general reserve will be distributed that is nothing but ongoing processes which all of you know i am just concentrating on some important points in this our rtp discussion now comes creditor agreed to take over the investments at book value of 18000 at rupees 26000 the rest of creditors were paid at discount of 5% now first of all we will transfer all the assets and all the liabilities to our 
realization account so here we are having hmm, building stock investment debtors all these things creators this all items will be transferred yeah creators 160 bills payable building stock investment debtors and cash account opening balance will be in cash only now what is the amount paid to creators they agree to take over the investments okay but then remaining amount i have to pay to them so we have a small working note book value of creators is 160000 here it is then creditors taking over investments for 26000 this is what we learned here creditors 18000 investment is taking at 26000 and whatever is remaining on that we got 5% discount so we paid 127300 okay now what will be the amount of investments received okay because the remaining investments were sold at a profit of 14,000. This is there. So simultaneously, I'll do that working note. What is given in the, our ICI RTP also. We had 1 lakh. So 16,000 is deducted. Why 16,000 is deducted? Because that has been sold off by R. And the proceeds have been taken by him in this personal account. So we are left out with 84,000. Then book value of the creators taken over. Well, that is nothing but 16,000. Don't say 26. 26 is the value at which they have taken the book value is 18,000. So we are left out with 66,000 on that profit. So we get sale investments 80,000. Hmm? Sale of investments. Same way, debtors 140. R has received somebody. Amount 12, uh, 14,000 is there. Check of debtor 14,000. So that got reduced. So we are left out with 126. On that, we give discount of 12,600. This is the amount received from debtors only. Okay, and rest all those things are uh, nothing but basic stuff. Other assets realized as follow building 110, stock 240, bills are settled at discount of 1000 and expenses of 16,000. So that is all item that would have been posted in your realization account and your cash account. Yeah, cash creditors paid, cash expenses and that bills payable. Okay, so these are the payments. And then we have sold something so building is sold at 120 percent something like that stock is sold investments based on the working note whatever investments i have from that the investments which have been misappropriated by r that was removed then whatever was left out my dear students from that we deducted the investments book value which is taken over by the creditors and then whatever is left on that 40 percent profit was there so it is eighty thousand. And daters again the same stuff we did so all these things happens you can just have a small glance over your realization account this is nothing but transfer of assets and liabilities and then realization of course the data is also there And then in my cash account, I have an opening balance, assets realized, creditors paid, bills payable paid, realization expenses. Now what we have to do, sir, we have to find out what is profit or loss on realization account. So this profit and loss and that 25,100 will be there. Now comes deficiency of R. If you look properly, what is the amount to be taken from our debit balance of 80 14,000 plus 22 from that deduct this this so there will be a deficiency but R is already paying us 14,000 this is the amount so there is a working here balance of capital 80 determines appropriation investment appropriation so total we have to take 1 lakh 16,000 from R hmm? from that relation profit general reserve and 14,000 so left out is 78,644 okay so and all these things is nothing but uh, what has been presented here in a vertical format that is nothing but the balance in capital account after everything is over so 78,644 now this 78,644 is nothing but deficiency it will be shared by the partners p q and s in the ratio of 15 is to 15 is to 6 you'll say why sir why not adjusted capital friends nothing but it is a there is a current account there and when current account is there, it will be in the ratio of capital. So ratio of capital is fixed. Huh? 30 is to 30 is to 
12 is as good as 15 is to 15 is to 6 hmm? so don't worry on that so the deficiency in the ratio of this so the journal entry would be nothing but P account debit Q account debit S account debit to R's deficiency account P Q S debit to R's capital account so the deficiency is shared and then whatever is the balancing figure that will be nothing but this is nothing but balancing figure friends this is balancing figure this amount of balancing figure will be given to partners capital accounts PQS in this ratio clear my friends any doubt on this point any query okay I hope things are simple now and your capital account tallies only important point what I identified in this was that rectification is should be happening during dissolution process and second point there is a fixed capital method how did you get to know its fixed capital method see your current account is there of R so a question arises what about P and Q and S it is zero balance let's make an assumption there hmm? no friends next question question number two conversion of partnership form into a company XYZ Our partner sharing profits and losses in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 after allowing interest on capital at 9% per annum. The balance sheet as on 31st March 2023 are as follows plant and machinery, fixtures, stock, and sundry debtors. Capital account of XYZ reserve fund creditors. The applied for conversion of the firm into private limited company named XYZ private limited and decide and the certificate was received on 1st April 2023. They decided to maintain the same profit sharing ratio that is nothing but 3 is to 2 is to 1 is their profit sharing ratio. They decided to maintain it same and preserve the priority in regard to repayment of capital as far as possible preserve to maintain the priority means who would be given first based on their capital ratio and the amount of capital that we will find out because the same thing which used to do in piecemeal for that purpose they decided to insert a clause of issuance of preference shares in the memorandum of association in addition to issuance of equity shares of rupees 10 each on 1st April 2023, the value of goodwill is determined on the basis of two years purchase of the average profit from the business of the last five years. The particulars of the profits are okay. The loss on 31st March 20 on account of loss by strike to the extent of 10,000. There was abnormal loss to the extent of 10,000 on 31st March 20. So can I say these two things have to be removed of this loss arising on account of strike and abnormality? It was agreed that the rest of the assets are to be valued on the basis of balance sheet as at 31st March except plant and machinery which is to be valued at 2,4,000. You are required to prepare the balance sheet of the company, partners capital account and statement showing final settlement between partners taking Y capital as the basis. We have to take Y capital as base. So Y's proportionate capital will be considered. Okay friends. So I hope you have read the question. Now look here. How things will move out. Hmm? Now, the working note will be based on first, let us find out goodwill. Hmm? So we have profits for five years. Whatever is abnormality, that abnormality has to be removed look properly there is a loss but in 31st March 20 uh, loss by strike 10,000 so we'll add it back there was an abnormal loss again on 31st March 20 only again 10,000 so I will add up the effect of 20,000 so I have 20 10 36 54 60 so my total profit of all these five years is nothing but 180 so 180 
डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव इट्स थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड एंड गुडविल इज हाउ मच तो क्वेश्चन से इज गुडविल इज नथिंग बट टू इयर्स परचेज टू इयर्स परचेज ऑफ एवरेज प्रॉफिट सो थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड इंटू टू माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट कम्स टू सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड ओके नाउ वॉट विल बी द परचेज कंसिडरेशन दैट वी विल बी रिसिविंग परचेज कंसिडरेशन will be based on book value of the asset except that plant and machinery they are giving us value of 2,4,000 so I have plant and machinery for this we will get 2,4,000 rest everything at book value will be there and goodwill will be added so assets goodwill plant and machine 2,4,000 furniture 40 stock 100,000 and creditors 60,000 clear and no not uh, sundry data 60,000 let us say 60,000, your creditors will be reduced from it. So you'll be getting purchase consideration, which is 3,80,000. Your purchase consideration is 3,80,000. So nothing but this amount will be received by whom? This amount will be received by all the three partners. Now, how should we go for the working for this with respect to 3,80,000? Now, these are the same things balance reserve fund got distributed hmm? the plant and machinery account increase in the value of plant and machinery and the shares what we are going to give basically what we can do is nothing but uh, find out the profit or loss which will be transferred to x y and z now value of equity shares to be allotted taking wise capital as the basis how did we come to know so here the question says friends it was agreed hmm, here the last point y capital is the taken as base now if you keep y capital as base how things will work out so can i say nothing but y's capital account is the base so 60000 is the amount of capital Y that 60,000 is for how much share of profit 2 for 2 share of profit it is 60,000 so for 3 share how much should be the capital of X can I say X capital will be required for 3 share 90,000 is required for X and how much is required for Z for Z is having only one share so he's going to require only 30,000 if I write down the capital account balance X Y and Z the balance is 1 lakh 60 and 40 less proportionate capital taking y's capital as base so here comes for x we need to have 90,000 for y the whole 60,000 goes because that was the base and here for z we require 30,000 so what is the excess capital for which we are going to give them preferences so it's 10,000 here nothing and 10,000 here it means total purchase consideration of 380,000 out of which 10,000 of preferences will be given to X and Z okay 10,000 and 10,000 the preferences and then whatever is left out that will be nothing but the amount what we are supposed to pay you with respect to equity shares because if you look properly my friends 1 lakh is your opening balance plus 60,000 plus 36,000 from that 6,000 if you deduct what is the amount left out is 1 lakh 90,000 how much I should give you preference shares 10,000 Z how much 10,000 so remaining is nothing but equity shares the amount has been calculated here 
taking wise capital as base both x and z have 10000 each as excess in their capital account since interest on capital is meant to compensate those whose excess capital in proportion to limits since in this case partner it is appropriation of profit it will be proper to give 9% preferences to x and z for 10000 each and remaining 360 in form of equity shares divided in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 okay then they will share the company's profit into ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 also that is very simple now coming back how accounting will be done in the books of company very simple company will pass an entry all assets debit including goodwill plant and machinery uh, and the debtors to creditors to equity share capital to preference share capital so you will find this share capital of 380 is nothing but equity share capital plus preference share capital 96000 is nothing but your creditors property plant equipment intangible asset is nothing but your goodwill and that stock and debtors which you have taken got it so this is the journal entry to be passed by the entity and which will be represented in form of balance sheet so my dear students this is nothing but the end of question number 2 which was conversion of partnership firm into a company okay let us now move on to question number 3 that is accounting for esop arzu limited has its share capital divided into equity shares of 10 each on the 11021 it granted 10000 employee stock options at 50 per share when the market price was rupees 120 per share the fair value of the option calculated using option pricing model is 70 rupees the options were to be exercised between 10th december 21 and 31st march 22 the employee exercise an options for 8000 shares only and the remaining option laps the company closes the books on 31st march show the journal entry with narration as would appear in the books up to 31st march 22 now friends if you look properly 11021 i am granting 10000 options at rupees 50 so exercise price is 50 the market price is 120 which means the fair value is nothing but 70 per option so my entry will be bank account debit at 50 employees stock option outstanding account debit 70 to equity share capital and to security premium now what is happening is nothing but everything is happening within this year so there is no need to uh, recognize the expense based on cumulative purpose for each year we can directly pass an entry journal entry for issuing the shares that is nothing but bank account debit 8000 into 50 employee compensation expense the fair value that is 8000 into 70 to equity share capital into security payment 10 rupees because out of 120 and then employee compensation will be transferred now please don't think sir we should pass an entry employee compensation expense account debit to esos employee stock option outstanding account no that entries have to be passed if the exercise or wasting is going beyond one year only here nothing is going be a wasting period is within one year only so when it is within one year we will always pass a direct entry and not entry for recognize the expense on monthly basis or something like that okay so question number 3 i don't think so uh, requires more point let us now move on to question number 4 friends buyback of securities the following information from the balance sheet of z on 31st march 23 is available equity shares of 10 each fully paid up 10% redeemable preference shares of 10 each fully paid up 5000 reserves and surplus capital redemption reserve security premium general reserve profit and loss account secured loans 9% debentures current liabilities are given fixed assets investments cash at bank other current assets on 1st april company redeemed all its preferences at premium of 10% and bought back 10% of its equity shares at 20% per share in order to make cash available the company sold all the investments of 5000 lakhs you are required to pass journal entries for the above and prepare company balance sheet immediately after buyback of equity shares and redemption of preference shares so two things are happening redemption of preference shares and this also so my dear students uh, what are we supposed to do we are supposed to pass journal entries so first of all preferences will be redeemed and there is something known as all preferences are redeemed we also sold our investments so if i sell off my investment can i say my first journal entry will be nothing but bank account debit 5000 lakhs to investment 4700 lakhs to profit on sale of investment so that is done i redeem my preferences at a premium so 10% redeemable preference shares account debit 5000 premium on redemption to preference share holder account their premium on redemption will be written off against profit and loss account so profit and loss account debit to premium there we can only use pnl and then preference share holders will be made payment so preference share holders account debit to bank 
then comes buyback. Now, friends, remember, we are, we are not supposed to check the condition huh? uh, because the company is only buybacking 10% of its equity share capital. So, we can just consider that uh, those three conditions uh, that the amount should not exceed this much, these uh, date equity issues are all fulfilled and we can directly pass an entry for buyback. So, my entry would be nothing but equity share capital, that is equity share bought back account debit, premium on buyback account debit to bank or directly equity share capital account debit, premium on buyback account debit to equity share holder account and equity share holder account debit to bank. Now that premium on buyback can be written off against security premium. Hmm? So difference, premium on redemption of preferences cannot be written off against security premium, but premium on buyback of equity shares can be written off against security premium and remember don't forget to create CRR capital redemption reserve with respect to the face value of both equity shares bought back and preference shares redeemed so you can directly go on the journal entries and from there you can make a balance sheet so that is not the challenging area in this question very simple bank to investment to PNL 10% redeemable preference shares premium redemption preference shares to preference share holder in profit and loss account debit to premium C. Here we are using PNL. So remember that point. For that only premium is allowed. PNL only. Equity share capital premium on buyback to equity shares bought back account. Security premium account debit to premium C. Here I am using security premium. Preference share holder account debit, equity buyback account debit to bank. So that is payment entry is when combined. Uh, general reserve to capital redemption reserve how much so equity share is 1600 bought back and preference share is nothing but 5000 so 5000 plus 1600 friends that gives me total 6600 and friends uh, you can make a balance sheet out of it so the working has been given very simple stuff share capital 1440 160 shares are bought back that is nothing but the disclosure general reserve transfer to CRR means ERR has been created, CRR, we received something from general reserve, secured premium, something has been utilized for writing off it, so the balance is zero, then we have PNL cup balance and that PNL balance has been added with sale and this, okay, and we have some long term borrowings and the closing balance of bank has been found out and we have made the balance sheet, so I don't think so, this question requires any more discussion, very simple question. Only the point which was very important that is what I spoke of. Yeah, here is the balance sheet. Okay, the balance sheet part and the assets part. Now, friends, coming on to the next question. Explain how rights of a share can be altered. Yes, you can alter the right of a share, but that does not mean you can make. Uh, differential voting rights with normal share and normal share into differential voting right. that cannot be done but the rights of the shares can be altered only if you take written consent of three-fourth of the persons whom rights are getting altered and because of the rights getting altered if it is going to affect the other class of shareholder then of course consent of 75 percent that is nothing but three-fourth shareholders whose right is getting affected because of this is also to be considered so can the rights of the shares be altered yes the answer is yes but that does not mean differential will become normal and normal will become differential that cannot happen the rights of the share of particular class one insured can be varied or altered under section 48 if the provision with respect to such variation is contained in the memorandum or articles of the company or in absence of any such provision in the memorandum or articles if such variation is not prohibited by the terms of issue of shares of that class. However, it would require consent in writing of the holders of not less than three-fourth of the issued shares of that class or by means of special resolution passed at a separate meeting of the holders of issued shares of that class. Hence, if equity shareholders of series A require a change in their right of a particular nature, either a special resolution of specially conveyed meeting of this particular class of shareholder will suffice or otherwise more than 75% shareholders can give their consent in writing. However, it must be understood that a company having equity shares with voting rights cannot convert them into equity shares with differential voting rights or vice versa. 
However, variation in the rights should not affect the rights of any other class, say equity shares of B class or preference shares. In such situation, if variation of one class of shareholder affects the rights of any other class of shareholder, the consent of three-fourth of other class of shareholder shall also be obtained and the provision of this section shall apply to such variation. Okay, so that was simple stuff. Now, question number six, it's amalgamation of companies. The following information from the balance sheet of X Limited on 31st March 2023 is given. 4,000 equity shares of 100 each, 10% debentures, loans, trade payables, general reserve, building, machinery, inventory, trade receivables, bank, patent, share issue expense. Y Limited agreed to absorb X Limited on the following terms and conditions. Y Limited would take over all assets except bank balance and patents at their book values less 10%. Goodwill is to be valued at 4 years purchase of super profits assuming that the normal rate of return and return to be 8% of the combined amount of share capital and general reserve. Goodwill should be valued at this. Why limited is over to take over trade payables at book value? The purchase consideration is to be paid in cash to the extent of 3 lakhs and balance in fully paid equity shares of 100 each. The average profit is 60 to 200. The liquidation is 8,000. Y sold prior to 31st March. Goods costing 60,000 to X. 50,000 worth of goods are still in the inventory. Trade payables of X include 20,000 deal to Y. Okay, so nothing but unrealized profit is there. Show necessary ledger accounts in the books of X Limited and prepare balance sheet of Y Limited as on 1st April 2023 after takeover. I think friends very simple so let us start with the question instead of making this accounts first let us find out what would be the amount of my purchase consideration goodwill what is the goodwill amount Goodwill is to be valued at 4 years purchase of super profit assuming normal return on 8% of combined amount of share capital and general reserve. 4 years purchase of super profits. So your average profit has been given 62,200 less 8% of 440. From where did you get this 440? Nothing but your share capital and general reserve total balance is nothing but 440 on that 8%. So the super profit is 27,000. Uh, average profit was already given and four times the super profit so if you get one lakh eight thousand and the pc is net asset method huh? what is to be given how much is to be given it is nothing but net asset method goodwill valuation then building whatever is the building value we are taking over your building at one lakh seventy thousand no building is taken at ten percent less than book value machinery again ten percent less than book value Inventory again 10% less than the book value. Trade receivable 10% less than the book value. So total assets less trade payables. You will say sir what about patent and bank? Friends please read the question. Why would take over all assets except bank balance and patent? at their book value less 10 percent it means patents and bank balance are not taken over so your total amount is nothing but six lakh five thousand out of this six lakh five thousand how much you are going to pay what is the pc payment purchase consideration three lakhs so can i say the breakup of pc will be this way cash 3 lakhs and friends what is the next stuff we are going to pay 3 lakhs and remaining amount will be nothing but 3 lakh 5 thousand so that is equity shares 
how many equations you will issue so if you look properly the question says uh, 125 so 3 lakh 5000 divided by 125 face value so 2440 shares 2440 equity shares of rupees 100 each issued at a premium of 25 clear my dear students so this is how we get the answer for it now Unrealized profit on stock is nothing but uh, 7,500. The inventory of X includes 50,000, which is sold by Y. Unrealized profit will be nothing but, uh, I'll just do the working for you, so the, there is no problem. You have sold goods of 60,000 to the other entity, uh, Y limited, 80,000. It means 20,000 is the profit. Hmm? So, cost price, 60,000 profit 20,000 the selling price is 80,000 now out of this how much of goods are there with me 50,000 so what is the profit Twelve thousand five hundred. Okay, so here it is. The inventory of A includes fifty thousand, which is sold by Y. Unrealized profit on this inventory will be nothing but twelve thousand five hundred. But 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 but, don't you think Y purchased the assets of X Limited at a price ten percent less than the book value? Ten percent needs to be adjusted from the inventory. That is ten percent of 50,000 that is 5,000 so the amount of unrealized profit for which we are supposed to do investments is 7,500 see this is nothing but uh, when we prepare the balance sheet of Y limited why it is extract because Y limited is an existing company, it is absorbing X limited. So we are just going to write down only those things which are pertaining to this absorption only. So share capital, reserves and surplus, trade payables, bank overdraft. Hmm? Why bank overdraft? Because we paid 3 lakhs cash. So from where can we bring this cash? 2400 equity shares, reserves and surplus, 61,000 is my secured premium. That is nothing but 2440 into 25. 61,000 and that unrealized profit of 7,500 adjusted through PL. Then trade payables, there is an intercompany 20,000. How come 20,000? Here it is 20,000 friends. Trade payables, plant and machinery, and property plant equipment, building and machinery, intangible asset, goodwill is 108,000, inventory is 99,000 opening balance from that profit on cancellation 7,500. Trade receivables 117 and intercompanies have been adjusted. Of course, it is an extract because question does not give us why agreed to absorb X limited. So Y limited balance sheet should be there. And then whatever items of PC what we found out for X that will be included. Now you'll say, sir, uh, liquidation of expenses of 8,000. What should we do, friends? Nothing is to be done. Why? Because that will be paid by X limited only hmm? because patent rights and bank balance has not been considered by them. Why limited that is purchasing company sold prior to 31st March goods costing 60,000 to X limited for 80,000. So don't you think X limited goods includes goods received from Y limited 50,000 are still in inventory. That's why we did the adjustment. Now friends one more point was there. Ledger accounts of X limited, which ledger accounts you will prepare? Realization account, equity shareholder account, equity shares in X limited, cash bank account and equity shares in Y limited and Y limited account. So the ledger accounts are already there. Okay, building machinery, inventory, trade receivables, patents and all those things. And this is the PC. Realization loss.
Okay. They did an extra part with respect to that bank uh, debentures and loan account and all these things. Yeah. Why this extra is done? Because these are the liabilities which are not taken over. These debentures and loans, these are the liabilities which are not taken over. Huh, but they took over the trade payables. So the trade payables has been transferred to our realization account. So this has been done separately. Okay. So these three accounts have been prepared separately so that balance has been transferred appropriately. Okay, friends. So this is the end of that particular amalgamation question. Now let us move on to internal reconstruction question also. Following information from balance sheet of Ruby Limited as on 31st March 23, authorized and issued capital 60,000 shares of 100 each, 60 lakhs, 40,000 7% cumulative preference shares of 100 each, fully paid up 40 lakhs, general reserve, loan from director, trade payables, outstanding expenses, bank loan, patents, plant and machinery, building, trade receivables, inventory, cash, bank balance and profit and loss account. The years of preference dividend is 560,000. The company has suffered losses since last three years due to bad market condition and hope for a better position in future. The following scheme of reconstruction has been agreed upon and duly approved by all the concern equity shares to be converted into six lakh shares of 10 each equity shareholders to surrender 80 percent of the holdings preference shareholders agree to forego their arrears of dividend and consideration for which seven percent preference shares to be converted into eight percent trade payables agree to reduce their claim by one fourth in consideration of getting shares of 10 lakh out of the surrendered equity shares Directors forego their amount due on loan. Surrender shares not otherwise utilized to be cancelled. Assets to be reduced, patents, machinery and inventory. Trade receivable uh, to the extent of 34 lakhs are considered good. Revalued figures of building is accepted at 14 lakhs. Bank loan is paid. Any surplus after meeting the losses to be utilized for writing down the value of plan further. It means if there is any balance left on in our capital reduction account that will not be transferred to capital reserve account but it will be utilized to write off this plant expenses on uh, reconstruction amounts to 120 further 80,000 equity shares were issued to the existing members for increasing the working capital the issue was fully subscribed and paid up you are required to pass general interest to give effect of the above arrangement and also draw up the resultant balance sheet of the company okay friends We'll go one by one journal entry hmm? so that things becomes easier for us you may just have a glance over this question what are the important points there and then we can go for it Equity shares are to be converted into 6 lakh shares of 10 each. If you look properly, what is your equity shares? 60,000 of 100. So it gets converted into 10. So equity share capital to equity share capital. Subdivision. And then the shares are surrendered. This is what it says. 80% hmm? are surrendered. So equity share capital to share surrender. 80% of this. So two stuff done. Third, preference shareholders agree to forego their rights on arrears of preference dividends. Ignore because it is nothing but an unrecorded item. Off balance sheet item and off balance sheet item is cancelled off. So there is no gain or loss on that. So that will be ignored. But the remaining preferences, what are they saying? That 7% uh, converted into 8%. So done. 7 to 8. So no capital reduction will be there. Let's move on to the next point. Trade payables agree to reduce the claim by one fourth and get 10 lakh of the share surrender so one fourth so what is your total trade creditors just reduce it by one fourth so trade payables 49 lakh 20 thousand so 1230 is gone so whatever is left out for that we will be issuing them 
equity shares hmm? share surrender account debit to equity share capital we are going to issue them 10 lakh share surrender issued against state peoples under reconstruction scheme So, one-fourth will be reduced off and 10 lakhs will be issued to them. Now, next point comes, directors agree to forego. Okay, so directors have agreed to forego their loan. Loan from directors, that is 880. And your trade payables was how much, friends? I will just do the working for you. Uh, 49, 20, 49, like 20,000. One-fourth. That is nothing but 12 lakh 30,000. So 12 lakh 30,000. Okay. And building is also increased. So they have just done a combined entry here. Now, what was your balance in your share surrender account? The balance in share surrender account was, was 48 lakhs. Out of that 48 lakhs, can I say 10 lakhs have been utilized? So whatever balance is left, it will be transferred to nothing but capital reduction account. Done. Then comes of course, uh, it has not gone in this way only what we wanted. But okay, whatever has happened, it's okay. Mm. Bank loan is paid. So, bank loan paid. Bank loan account debit. Expenses on realization to bank. And then whatever is the loss has been considered here. Capital reduction to patents, to trade receivables, to inventory, to profit and loss, to expenses, all these things. Now for that, if you look properly, friends, your working note should be nothing but capital reduction account. In capital reduction, what comes on the credit side? Huh? What has come on the credit side? I can directly identify from here. Total 24 lakh 10,000 has come from the credit. Hmm? So 24 lakh 10,000. And there is a share surrender huh? by share surrender 38 something was there yes 38 lakhs so 38 lakhs comes here on the credit side now we have debited our share uh, capital reduction account on what basis sir plant and machinery patents inventory trade receivables all these things have been written off so 8 lakhs plus 13 lakh of trade receivable because how much trade receivables are good uh, only 34 lakhs are good and you have a total trade receivable of 47 which means the remaining 13 lakhs are doubtful 13 lakh plus 6 lakh inventory then the debit balance of PL will also be written off so 1680 is there and expenses on reconstruction was nothing but 120 so 4580 is the debit which is coming here total debit and then we have a credit of 38 lakhs and 24 lakh 10,000 so balance is left out of 16 lakh 30,000 let's check out this is what we have done yes 16 lakh 30,000 which will be not transferred to capital reserve account but used for plant For the 80,000 equity shares were issued for existing members, equity capital, this was fully subscribed and paid up. So nothing but money is received, done. And then friends, I think uh, balance sheet, you have to make it out. So just you have to take care for making balance sheet because that is the challenging area which I find majority of the students find it difficult. Just they make some errors, not big. They know the concepts but the errors are made. PP reduce building increase cash and cash equivalent yeah and this is your balance sheet after all those things are over so this is what friends all about your internal reconstruction question let us now move on to the next question now dear students we move on to question number eight that is liquidation of company Amount payable in winding up of a company are as follows. Secured creditors 250 and workmen due is 5 lakh. 
शो द पेमेंट मेड एंड ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ बैलेंस इन द फॉलोइंग टू इंस्टेंसेज इफ सिक्योरिटी रियलाइज इज फोर लैक्स द सिक्योरिटी रियलाइज इज टू लैक्स नॉ सिक्योरिटी रियलाइज इज फोर लैक इट मीन्स कैन ए सी द अमाउंट ऑफ सिक्योरिटी इज मोर देन द अमाउंट ऑफ सिक्योर क्रेडिटर इट मीन्स नो पोर्शन ऑफ द सिक्योर क्रेडिटर कैन बी टर्म्ड एज अनसिक्योर्ड आफ्टर आफ्टर रियलाइजिंग दिस फोर लैक इन द रेशियो ऑफ देयर कैरिंग अमाउंट but here when the security realized is 2 lakhs it means the portion of secured creditor to the extent of 50000 will be referred as unsecured creditors ha huh? and the 2 lakh will be divided in this ratio and then whatever is left out will be referred as preferential creditors oh so that's very simple stuff here it is uh the eighth answer my dear students uh secure creditors is 250 and 5 lakhs that is nothing but uh, the ratio of 1 is to 2 750 you received how much 4 lakhs so this 4 lakhs will be divided between secured and workman compensation in the ratio of 1 is to 2 which is this and the remaining amount will be referred as preferential creditors and of course this is zero only why zero of course here not applicable only for secure creditors this will be zero because the amount of realization the amount of realization is but obvious uh, more than the amount of secured creditors so nothing is unsecured portion as far as security value is only 2 lakhs then can i say 50000 will be but obvious treated as unsecured portion so 2 lakh will be divided in the ratio of 122 so 250 minus 66666 That is one lakh eighty three 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 four, of which fifty thousand is unsecured, and remaining will be preferential creditors. Okay, so that was a simple point. Uh, unsatisfied portion of secured creditors to the extent which could not be paid because of that security being used for overexpend due is treated as overriding preferential payment, and remaining portion is to be treated as unsecured. So that concept we have already done. Now let's move on to classification of advances as far as NBFC is concerned. MS Finance Limited is a non-banking financial company. It provides you with the following information regarding its outstanding amount: rupees two hundred lakhs, of which installments are overdue on four hundred accounts for last one month. Amount overdue is forty lakhs. Twenty-four accounts for two months. Amount overdue is twenty-four lakhs. Ten uh, accounts for more than thirty months. Amount overdue is twenty lakhs. Four account for more than three months. Amount overdue is twenty lakhs. Already identified as substandard asset. Uh, one account of ten lakhs, which has been identified as non-recoverable by the management. Out of the ten accounts overdue more than thirty months. Out of the ten accounts, means it is giving reference to this. Now, overdue for more than thirty months. Six accounts are already identified as substandard. Uh, that amount is six lakhs for more than twelve months, and others are identified as substandard for a period of less than twelve months. Classify the asset of the company in line with non-banking financial company systematically important non-deposit taking and deposit taking company. Reserve Bank Directions 2016. Okay, so you are a systematically important non-deposit and a deposit-taking company. So of course uh, the three months criteria is there. So now, friends, if you look properly, the total amount is 200 lakhs. And that 200 lakhs is pertaining to how many accounts? So that the information is not clearly available. 400 accounts for last month 40 lakhs so 40 lakhs information is available then it says some 24 this one month and two month this is one month two month is 24 lakhs they have been outstanding of course both of them will be standard now this 10 accounts for more than 30 months amount overdue is 20 lakhs Now, what about these ten accounts? Out of the ten accounts overdue for more than thirteen months, six accounts are already identified as substandard. Six lakhs for more than twelve months. Now, anything which is uh, substandard for more than twelve months, so can I say, friends, that is uh, nothing but a 
classified as doubtful so out of this 20 lakhs 6 lakhs is doubtful so 14 lakhs is substandard the 20 lakhs 6 lakhs will be doubtful because it has completed 12 months being substandard and 14 lakhs will be nothing but my substandard only as far as this is concerned this is standard and this is also standard because it has not completed three months criteria then it says four accounts for more than three years amount overdue 20 lakhs already identifies as substandard so this is nothing but doubtful asset 20 lakhs that is doubtful one account of 10 lakhs has been identified as non-recoverable one account of 10 lakhs so can I say this is loss asset in the last out of the 10 accounts okay classify so you'll say sir this does not tell you that is nothing but remaining amount na? so what is the remaining amount here balancing figure 86 comes this 86 is nothing but standard no information is given okay so let us give the answers standard assets now how many are standard assets substandard assets doubtful assets and loss assets four categorization happens standard so can I say this is standard this is standard and this 86 is standard so 86 24 and 40 86 24 and 40 done perfect substandard how much is substandard can I say 14 lakhs only so 14 lakhs is substandard okay doubtful asset friends here I did this was also doubtful and this is also doubtful so 20 and 6 26 20 and 26 and loss asset 10 so total over reduce this this is how the solution works my dear friends let us proceed further then for banking companies question number 10 following information of Raja Bank Limited for the year ended on 31st March 23 are as under total interest earned and received on term loans total is given there afterwards interest earned on term loan classified as NPA interest received on term loan classified as NPA now see don't you think if an account is classified as an NPA, interest income is to be recognized on very good cash basis only. So, 3655 is total earned from this 1190 is earned, which means 2465 is not received. If it is not received, then don't you think it means this 2465 should be reduced from my total income? Then comes total interest earned on cash credit and overdraft 28315 interest earned but not received 4615 so here I will be reducing this 4615 that will also be reduced interest on deposit expense that is nothing interest commission exchange brokerage nothing but you received profit on sale profit on revaluation of assets income from investment that is nothing but uh, my direct interest earned will be there this will be other income payment to and provision for employees rent expenses operating expenses printing director fees repairs and maintenance depreciation on bank property insurance okay so these are all your expenses classification of assets standard including advances to commercial and real estate uh, sector that is 35 lakhs nothing but uh, 30 remove so that 3500 you can say uh, if you remember for standard assets it is 0 0.40 but if that uh, assets are given to such risk sectors that is nothing but commercial and real estate sector then it is one percent substandard doubtful not covered by security hundred percent doubtful asset 25 percent loss asset hundred percent okay so that percentage though you have to remember you are required to calculate profit before tax prepare PNL of Raja Bank Limited including schedules for the year 31st March and calculate provision to be required. Okay, my dear friends, I will start one by one. 
the first part how much interest income so uh, this is nothing but pnl but in that the interest which is on schedule 13 so how much interest is on so interest on is nothing but 12750 minus 2465 so my interest on should be 10285 first part 10285 uh, remember interest on NPA is recognized only on receipt basis then the next point was nothing but interest on but not receipt so 4615 should be reduced from 28315 so you get 23700 and this income from investments nothing but 10870 income from investment 10870 so this is my total interest on other income I made you write down these three points one two and three uh, 1005 9380 and 1710 this is my other income so this is also done then friends what is the interest expend that is interest on deposit this was your interest expense 20600 and rest are nothing but all your operating expenses 1 2 3 4 5 6 income from investment name that is not there payment to provision rent printing payment to and provision rent printing director's fees and allowance director fees and repairs and maintenance depreciation on banks property 7 points are there and all the 7 points are there. done okay now friends uh, so this is done with very simple stuff that you can just uh, write it down schedules 13 14 from that expenditure uh, now how much provisions is to be made that provision will be based on my working note uh, one percent for that real estate and commercial sector commercial real estate now see your total risk is 23500 out of which 23,500 out of which 3,500 is real estate on 3,500 1% on this 0.40% should be there that is nothing but 80 on 20,000 0.40 80 and 3,500 it should be 1% which is nothing but 35 next is substandard fully secured fifteen percent substandard fully secured then doubtful assets not covered by securities two thousand hundred percent doubtful asset covered by security twenty five percent and loss asset full hundred percent so the amount of provision is five zero nine zero friends okay and that goes in your PNL five zero nine zero so total profit and loss is available so so simple simple questions let us now move on to consolidation Chen limited and its subsidiary Sitara limited provide the following information for the year ended on 31st March 2023 Chen Limited and Sitara Limited equity share capital finished goods inventory on 1422 on 31st March 23. Hmm? Both of them are giving dividend income, other non operating income, raw material consumed, selling and distribution expense, production expense, loss on sale of investment, sale and other operating income, wages and salaries, general admin expense, royalty paid, depreciation, interest expense, other information. On 1st September 2020, Chen Limited acquired 5,000 equity shares of Rs. 100 each fully paid up in Sitara Limited. Okay, so this is the information on 31st March 23. And when are you acquiring it? On 1st September 2020, means the acquisition is not happening in the current year. Sitara paid a dividend of 10% for the year ended on 31st March 22. The dividend was correctly accounted by Chan Limited. Chan Limited sold goods 175 to Sitara at a profit margin of 20%. Parent is selling goods to subsidiary downstream transaction. 
Inventory of Sitara includes 70,000 of goods received from Chen. Selling and distribution expenses of Sitara Limited include 21 to 50 paid to Chen as brokerage. General and admin expense of Chen include 28,000 paid to Sitara. Sitara Limited used some resources of Chen and Sitara paid 5,000 as royalty. Consultancy fees, royalties and brokerage receipts should be considered as operating revenues. Prepare consolidated profit and loss account of Chen Limited and its subsidiary Sitara Limited for the year ended on 31st March 23 as per Schedule 3 of Companies Act 2013. Okay, now friends, uh, what we will do is nothing but we'll just uh, have to make the profit and loss account if you look properly they're asking preparing consolidated statement of profit and loss of Chand Chand and subsidiary Sitara so let us do the working note only with respect to our profit and loss now what are that working notes with respect to that profit loss first of all is nothing but revenue from operation Now revenue from operation that will be nothing but sale and other operating income this part. Sales of Chen and Sitara of course so 3325 and 1975 hundred 33 lakh 25,000 and 19 lakh 7500 now friends don't you think this includes intercompany also now what is that intercompany see from here we can get it uh, first September you have acquiring this Sitara paid dividend so that will be nothing but part of my other income Chen limited sold goods 175 to Sitara at a profit of 20% on selling price inventory of Sitara includes those goods so 175 is this intercompany selling distribution expense of Sitara is 21 to 50 paid to Chen as brokerage general admin expense paid to Sitara as consultancy Sitara used some of the resources now consultancy fees, royalties and brokerage are to be considered as operating revenue, consultancy and all these things have to be considered as operating revenue. So we can just say less intercompany adjustment. Now this intercompany adjustment should be done for 1,75,000. Then it should be done for twenty one to fifty and the corresponding deduction should be on the debit side of uh, the PNL that is nothing but expenses part we will do it twenty eight thousand and five thousand twenty eight thousand and five thousand and you will get the figures okay let me check the answer there Yeah, so this intercompany sells 175, 28, 5, and 21 to 50. So we'll be getting 50 lakh 3250. So the first part is revenue from operations. Then we have other income, which is our schedule number two other income. Now, in other income, friends, what we will be there? So the amount which we have deducted here 175, 21, 250, 28,000 and 5,000 is to be reduced from the expenditure part also. Now other income. Now other income, the dividend income is there and non-operating income. Dividend income of Chen and Sitara is one sixty eight and forty three seven fifty. 
10,500. So these two things have been considered. Now friends, the next point comes. Don't you think in this uh, they have received a dividend of 10% was correctly accounted by Chan Limited. Now, how much dividend? So if you look properly, the total share capital of this is 6 lakhs. How much shares did we buy? We acquired 5,000 shares. So 5,000 into 10, uh, 100 rupees. There is the total value 50 lakhs on that they have given us 10 percent so 50,000 is nothing but mutual owings that has to be reduced okay so let's verify dividend income 1 lakh 68 thousand 43,750 loss of sale of investment so that loss is uh, considered separately huh? I can consider it as other expenses also here uh, our module has given in the sense RTP has given as a reduction it's okay no issues then non operating income and dividend income of 50,000 gets reduced other non operating and 35, 10,500 so the net effect is nothing but 1,81,000 okay now the next part comes and that is nothing but expenses in expenses what do we write down cost of raw material consume so raw material consume so raw material consume is already there it's already given here friends 1393 and 4,72,000 the production expenses have already been given here but don't you think this raw material consume would be nothing but inclusive of the sales of the other party that is nothing but purchase for me so it will be appropriately adjusted so here chain this this and purchase is 175 why 175 because we have already considered this as sales here so here it will be 175 direct expenses will be added so my cost of raw material consume is 2145 500 then comes the next area and what is the next area cost of raw material consume there afterwards the next is nothing but changes in inventories of finished goods stock in trade and work in progress now here we have nothing but finished goods only so i have considered this raw material consumed also i have also considered this this and of course the question is also considered this 26 to 50 sale on investment this is also done for us now friends changes in inventory that is nothing but opening inventory and closing inventory so opening and closing this difference has to be given effect in our PL account but 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 while giving this effect remember you need to also reduce what unrealized profit on the goods which are already there in your closing stock so how much is that unrealized profit here it is mm, this point my friends if you Sita includes 70,000. So can I say 14,000 will be the amount of unrealized profit? Okay, so changes in inventories, Chan 437 and 75,000. Changes, that is increase in inventories. If you look properly, your closing stock is more than your opening stock. Closing stock, 857,500. Minus 4,20,000. So your increase is 437,500. And for Sita, it is 75,250. And from that, 7 lakhs into 20%, that is 14,000 unrealized, that is done. So, changes in inventories is done. Thereafter, what we have? Employee benefit expense. Employee benefit expense, nothing but wages and salaries, it is one and the same. So, no issues in this. Wages and salaries, 1330 and 245. Then comes finance charges and then depreciation finance charges do we have any finance expenses yes my dear here it is finance charges appropriately taken care of uh, we are just going with the structure of PNL and thereafter depreciation that is also appropriately taken care of depreciation here 
now comes the next part other expenses now don't you think other expenses uh, will be nothing but general admin expenses for this this royalties paid second area selling and distribution expenses but when you are taking these other expenses whatever has been considered that brokerage and all those things will be appropriately adjusted selling and distribution 21 250 28000 and 5000 should be reduced from those total of other expenses so we'll write down the other expenses general and admin consultancy fees minus royalties 5000 intercompany 5000 selling and distribution expenses brokerage and then we get 8 like 43 to 50 now all these things what we have considered all those schedules will be appropriately posted in our profit and loss account revenue from operation other income expenses cost of metal consumption all those things what we did here the same thing will be there okay and friends remember you have to make these notes this way only don't try to make this way huh? this plus this total here because then it becomes difficult many of you will thinking this we can make parent and then we make, can make subsidiary and then we make total it happens when the question does not have major mutual eliminations then that is very simple sir your employee expense subsidiary employee expense total employee expense with super but that type of presentation becomes very challengeable when you have so many of mutual transactions here. I don't say you can't do it, but it becomes challenging. So it's better to adopt the module way, which is so simple way. We are just going to make this. And all these things will be part of my working notes. Okay. So now friends, let us move on to the next area. Question number 12. And there starts your accounting standards questions. AP Limited is a construction contractor undertakes the construction of commercial complex for K Limited. AP Limited has submitted separate proposal for each three units of the commercial complex. A single agreement is entered into between the two parties. The agreement lays down that the three units is 50 lakhs, 60 lakhs, 75 lakhs respectively. Agreement also lays down the completion time of each unit. Comment on reference worth AS7. Should it treat as single contracts or three separate contracts? Obviously, there has to be a segmentation. When should you do segmentation? There is a single contract that requires construction of multiple assets that have been negotiated independently. The consideration of one asset is not at all dependent or interrelated on the consideration of another asset. Yeah, and the contractee and the contractor can obviously remove any of the asset from that means that kind of negotiation was there. So we will prepare three contract accounts. As per AS7 construction contract, when the contract covers number of assets, the construction of each asset should be treated as separate construction contract. When separate proposal have been submitted, each asset is subject to separate negotiation and the contract and customer have been able to accept and reject that part of contract, the cost can be at Therefore, you should treat each unit as a separate construction contract. Okay, done. So, that is part 1 of question number 12. Part 2. Part 2 here. On 1st December 22, GR Construction undertook a construction for 45 lakhs. On 31st March, the company found it has already complete spent 32.50 on construction. Additional cost is 15.10 lakhs. What amount should be charged to revenue in the final accounts? So now if you look properly, 32.5 plus 15.10, 47.6. It means your total contract cost is going to exceed the total contract revenue. So the whole loss on the contract is to be recognized immediately in this year. So the total loss that should be there in my PNL should be 2.6 lakhs. So cost of construction. 32.5, 15, 47.6. So proportion completed is this much only. Total cost, so the foreseeable loss is 2.60. Okay. And of course, we need to create a provision. Means the whole loss of 2.60 will be there in our profit and loss. But some loss is getting recognized because of percentage of completion. And the remaining is created through a provision. So the total loss is 2.60. Given below is the following information of BS Limited. 
Goods of 50,000 were sold on 18th March, but the request of the buyer, this were delivered on 15th April. So it is request of the buyer, I will recognize revenue of 50,000. Uh, if the risk and reward have been transferred, but the delivery is delayed at the buyer's request, it means there is an acceptance by the buyer and we will recognize the revenue for whole 50,000. On 13 1 2023, goods of 125,000 were sent on consignment basis of which 20% of the goods were unsold. It means we are going to recognize revenue with respect to 80% of the goods sold. That is 1 lakh will be recognized as revenue. 1 lakh worth of goods are sold on approval basis. The period of approval is 3 months. So December, Feb, March. Okay. Buyer has sent approval for 75. Can I say the whole 1 lakh will be recognized as sale only? Why whole 1 lakh will be recognized as sale? Sir, 75,000 is approved. 25%, that is 25,000. Don't you think the period of approval is already expired? It means this is nothing but a deemed approval. The seller has transferred the buyer the property in the goods for a price or significant risk and rewards of the ownership has been transferred to the buyer and the seller retains no effective control of the goods. Okay, no signal uncertainty exists with the amount of this sale. So hold 50,000 case to 80% uh, that is nothing but 1 lakh and third is nothing but we will recognize full 1 lakh. So 250, 50 plus 1 lakh plus 1 lakh as our revenue. Next, the accountant of Parag Limited has furnished you the following data related to the business division, segment revenue, segment results, segment assets. Now, we have to identify which are reportable segments with the criteria laid down by AS 17. So, revenue criteria 10% of revenue, assets criteria 10% of assets, result criteria nothing but 10% of segment result whether profit or loss is means uh, a segment is reportable if the segment result whether profit or loss is 10% or more of combined results of all segments in profits or combined results of all segments in losses whichever is higher in absolute terms okay so as far as revenue criteria is concerned I think that's very simple who is fulfilling the revenue criteria 1000 into 10% that is 100 that is fulfilled by A B, C and D. All of them are fulfilling. As far as result criteria is concerned, 150 into 10 percent, that is 15, that is fulfilled by A, B and C. See, all segments are reportable from revenue criteria only, but we need to check out with respect to others also. You can't uh, directly judge that. Na? Uh, so, in exam, we need to give the theory and then result criteria. Now, friends, see result. What are the segments in profits? Forty five and eighty one twenty five. All those segments which are in losses seventy and ten eighty. You have to look in absolute terms, whichever is higher one twenty five into ten percent. That is 12.5 means whether your profit is 12.5 or your loss is 12.5 you will be reportable so can i say that is fulfilled by which segment 12.5 a b and c a b c is fulfilling it revenue is 10 percent or more of all transaction with other segments yeah Segment result whether profit or loss is 10% or more combined whichever is greater in absolute terms or this. On the basis of revenue criteria A, B, C, D all are reportable. On the basis of result criteria that is 10% of 125 A, B, C are reportable. This is what we also did. Okay. And on the basis of asset criteria all segment except D are reportable. Of course D is not reportable. Since all segments are covered in at least one of the above criteria all segments have to be reported.
Okay, identify the related parties in the following cases as per ACT. Maya holds 61%. Maya is holding 61% of Sheetal. Sheetal holds 51% of fair. Sheetal holds 51% of fair. And care holds 49% of fair. Okay. The same question is there in our JKC textbook also. For Maya, who is reportable? Sir, for Maya, both Sheetal and fair are reportable. For Sheetal, who is reportable? Maya and fair. For fair, who is reportable? Maya, Sheetal and care. And for care, who is reportable in the sense which is the related party? For care, who is the related party? Only fair. See, for Maya, Sheetal is subsidiary and fair is sub subsidiary. For Sheetal, Maya is parent and there is nothing but holding company and fair is nothing but subsidiary. For fair, S is subsidiary and M is ultimate holding company. And C is investor, care is investor. And for care, fair limited is nothing but a associate. Sheetal is subsidiary, fair limited is subsidiary. Reporting entity is Sheetal, Maya is holding company, fair is reporting. For reporting company, fair, holding company, holding company, investor. And for that, associate. Okay. So, question number 15 is over, friends. Let us move on to next question. Jaya Limited took a machine on lease from Deluxe Limited. The fair value being 11,50,000. Economic life as well as the lease term is 4 years. It means it is a finance lease. At the end of each year, the lessee pays 3,50,000 to the lesser. Jaya Limited has guaranteed 70,000 on expiry of lease to Deluxe. However, Deluxe estimates the residual value to be only 25,000. The implicit return is 10% and the present value factor, see they have already given us. Calculate the value of machinery to be considered by Jaya Limited and the value of lease liability as per AS19. So can I say in case of finance lease, uh, the lessee recognizes or fixed the set taken on lease and lease liability at present value of MLP or fair value whichever is lower. Now fair value nothing but the market price which is already given it's 11 like 50,000 present value of MLP minimum lease payment so minimum lease payments my friends nothing but lease rentals plus guaranteed residual value by or on behalf of the lessee and we have to discount it off. Three fifty, three fifty, three fifty, and of course, in the last year, we are giving the guaranteed residual value seventy thousand. So three fifty plus seventy, that is nothing but four lakh twenty thousand. Discount it off eleven lakh fifty six thousand nine sixty. Present value of lease payment is eleven fifty six, which is more than fair value inception. So eleven fifty, therefore, lease liability and machine should be recognized at eleven fifty. Now, one doubt which you can raise here is, sir, but Deluxe is estimating residual value of twenty five thousand. Sir, I have already given guarantee that I will be giving 70,000. So for me, the guarantee is 70,000 only. No? That is the maximum for it. Deluxe may say, okay, I will be receiving 25,000 from selling in the market. But it already has a guarantee of 70,000. That is only for confusing you. For Jaya, it is nothing but the residual value which you have given as guarantee. What lesser expects that is irrelevant for us. Let's see. What guarantee have you given? 70,000. Done. Yeah. So, now we want to go for question number 17. Earning per share net profit for 2021 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs. Number of share outstanding prior to right issue 20 lakhs. Right issue price 20. Last date to exercise the right 1st June 2022. Right issue is one new shares for every five equity shares outstanding. That is 4 lakh new shares. 
Fair value of one equity shares immediately prior to exercise was 26. Compute basic earning per share for 1617. Financial year 22 23 and restated EPS for 21 22. Oh, yeah, this, uh, this is small error, I think so. Hmm? Basic for it should be 21 22. Hmm? There is a small error. Now, very simple. In current year, there is a right issue. So we need to bifurcate how much bonus element and how much fresh issue. But if before that, friends, uh, I'll find out that right factor and theoretical X right price. Theoretical X right price. Nothing but what is theoretical X right price? Fair value prior to right. 26 into existing shares that is 20 lakhs into 26 plus right shares how many right shares 4 lakh into 20 divided by existing shares plus right shares so i will be getting theoretical x right price 20 lakhs into 26 4 lakhs into 20 theoretical x right price is 25 now what we can find out nothing but right factor the bonus element i can say Fair value prior to write divided by theoretical X right price 1.04. So my bonus shares will be how much? 1.04. Equivalent shares. Three traders bonus. Your existing shares are 20 lakhs to 1.04 minus x. 80,000 shares will be treated as bonus out of your right issue of 4 lakh. 80,000 will be bonus, 3 lakh 20,000 will be nothing but your fresh issue. Now let us write down the EPS that is nothing but basic EPS for which year they have asked for 21 22 21 22 your earnings are 30 lakhs divided by how many shares friends uh, you are having somewhere around 20 lakh shares One point five. This is nothing but basic EPS for twenty one twenty two. Basic EPS for twenty two twenty three. That is current year. Current year there is a right issue, friends. And your earnings are fifty lakhs. Okay. And you already have twenty lakh shares. On which you will apply twelve by twelve plus eighty thousand shares. You will apply twelve by twelve. That is nothing but bonus. And 320,000 shares, that is 3.20, 3 lakh 20,000 shares, you will be using when the right issue is done, 1st June 22. So, 10 months June, July, August, September, October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March, 10 months into 10 by 12. Into 10 by 12. So, I'll be getting. 3 lakh 20,000 into 10 divided by 12, which is nothing but 2 lakh 66,666 plus 80,000 plus 20 lakhs.
0.1306 and then comes restated EPS for 21-22 just give the bonus effect in the previous year 30 lakhs 20 lakh shares already there plus 80,000 shares that is nothing but 20 lakh 80,000 so 30 lakhs divided by 20 lakh 80,000 which gives me 1.4423 yeah 1.5 that is nothing but this point 1.5 there afterwards uh, 2.13 current year 2.13 approximately and then 1.44 1.4423 mm, 1.04 yes this is our right factor we got it Twenty like into one point zero four, one point four four. Yeah, this this is nothing but same what I have done, huh? Don't worry at all. Bifurcation, we have done it in equivalent way. Whatever ICI does is nothing but same only twenty lakhs into one point zero four, plus the right shares for the remaining period. So 24 lakhs, it's one and the same. So don't worry about that. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. Following data is given, uh, Aditya Limited for the accounting year ended, accounting profit, book profit, profit as a income tax, tax rate, mat rate, calculate deferred tax asset and liabilities per AS22, an amount of tax to be debited to PNL account. Now, what is the amount of tax to be debited? So first of all, friends, uh, just remember very simple stuff that deferred taxes will always be based on normal tax rate and not mat rates. So accounting profit is 15 lakhs, income tax profit is 2 lakh 50 thousand. So what is the taxable, uh, not what is the timing difference? So 12 lakh 50 thousand is the timing difference into the tax rate of 20 percent. So 12 lakh 50 thousand into 20 percent that is nothing but 2 lakh 50 thousand is the amount of DTL to be created this is the DTL which we will create okay so what's first answer is done calculate deferred tax liability 2 lakh 50 thousand nothing but accounting profit 15 taxable profit that is income tax 250 so the difference is nothing but 12 lakh 50 thousand which is referred as timing difference into tax rate next in the amount of tax debited to PL. so don't you think when you create DTL you will pass the entry profit and loss to DTL. So this is what the tax has been debited. And now the question comes, uh, what else so don't you think current tax? So we know we have to pay tax in the current year, either based on normal rates or mat rates, whichever is higher. See normal rate 2 lakh 50,000 into 20%, which is 50,000 is the normal tax amount. As far as mat is concerned, MAT is 7,50,000 into the MAT rate 7.5 percent which is 56,250 so I have to pay 56,250 so my current tax will be 56,250 is my current tax so the amount that will be debited to PNL account for tax expenses 3,6,250 very simple way of answering this Deferred tax liability, it's 2,50,000. Here it is. Deferred tax liability, 2,50,000. Next amount debited to PNL account, current tax plus these, that. They're not given it, but the amount which gets debited. Is current tax. 
Okay, I'll just go with the formula that what they have given, but I have already given the answer. Defer tax liability that is two lakh fifty thousand and excess of mat. What is mat excess? Mat is more by this six thousand two fifty. So don't you think, friends? It is three lakh six thousand two fifty. Okay, this is what we did here. Three lakh six thousand two fifty. Question 22 is done. Uh, sorry, not 20. AS 22 related question number 18 is done. Now I move on to question number 19. Intangible asset. Swift Limited has acquired a patent right to manufacture a solar rooftop panel at a cost of 600 lakhs. The product life cycle has been estimated to be 5 years. And the amortization was decided in the ratio of future cash flows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. After third year, it was estimated that the patents would have an estimated balance useful life of 3 years and Swift estimated that the cash flow after 5th year to be 75. Determine the amortization cost of each patent. Now see, what is happening here? The same type of question is already there in our book. See, year 1, year 2, year 3. What is first, can I say it is in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1. So 6, 7, 8. So 600 lakhs. Amount of amortization. And the closing balance. So 600 lakhs would have been divided in the ratio of 8, 2 by 8. which is 150 and here we would have received 600 minus 150 that is 450 again this 600 into 2 by 8 150 so 450 minus 150 I would end up with 300 third year so 600 into 2 by 8 again 150 300 minus 150 I am left out with 150 but now what is happening after third year, the patent would have an estimated balance future life of three years. Means one or more three years are there. And after five years, it is 75. So what is happening is nothing but, friends, here, from here till here. So now my cash flows are 150, 150 and 75. So can I say now you have to amortize the patent based on the economic benefits which it is going to derive in the remaining year, which is nothing but 150 is to 150 is to 75 again 2 is to 2 is to 1 so 2 by 5 so year 4 what is left out is 150 into 2 by 5 year 5 150 into 1 by 5 year 6 one oh, sorry this is 2 by 5 only 150 into 1 by 5 so 150 into 2 divided by 5 that gives me 60 60 60 and 30 so here will be 150 minus 60 90 90 minus 60 that is 30 and 30 minus 30 that is nothing but zero okay friends so this is what is all about see this is how the change happens and prospectively you should never look retrospectively So this is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and then 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. This is what they have done. So amortize amount 150, 150, 150. So check it out. 150, 150, 150. And then what is happening? 60, 60, 30. 60, 60, 30. What it? Okay, well, now let me move on to the next part. That is the last AS, uh, AS 29. Provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets. With reference to AS29, how would you deal with the following in the annual accounts of the company? The company operates an offshore field where its licensing agreement requires to remove the oil rig at the end of the production and restore the seabed. 85% of eventual costs relate to removal of oil rig and restoration of damage caused by building it. 15% arise through extraction of oil at the balance sheet date 
rig has been constructed but no oil has been extracted now see friends what is happening is nothing but uh, we are having an oil rig nothing but in the sea we have created a artificial island uh, also referred as uh, floating island kind of stuff where we are extracting the oil from the seabed so we construct all those things as per the law once the oil is removed we have to remove all this uh, construction what we have done but when we have to remove all these things we also have to restore the seabed so the total cost of removing whatever it is out of which 85 percent is for the construction work and 15 percent is towards the spillage the moment you remove the oil there will be spillage and that all would have created economic um, environmental uh, problem na? so whatever it is we have to remove that part also but if i have not yet removed the oil there is no spillage it means there is no present obligation arising as a result of past events. See, construction is a past event. So, there is an obligation that I need to dismantle it. But spillage is not done. How would I clean it? So, there is no past event. So, there is no present obligation. So, I will create only provision with respect to 85% of the total cost which I anticipate. 85% only. The construction of oil rig creates an obligation under the terms of the license to remove the rig and restore the seabed and this does an obligating even at the balance sheet date however there is no obligation to rectify the damage that will be caused by extraction of oil and outflow of resources embodying economic benefits and settlement is probable thus a provision is recognized for the best estimate of 85 percent okay and of course uh, that provision will be added to the cost of ppe as per as10 however there is no obligation to rectify the damage that will be caused by extraction of oil as no oil has been extracted at the balance sheet date. So, no provision is required for the cost of extraction of oil. 15% of cost is there. Okay. So, there is the same. Next, the government introduces number of changes to the taxation laws. As a result of these changes, the company will need to train large proportion of its accounting and legal workforce in order to ensure continued compliance with tax laws regulations at the balance sheet date. No retraining of the staff has taken place. Should you create a provision? Answer is no. Why? Because I don't have a present obligation. Sir, but government has changed the law. Yes, I agree, my dear students. Government has changed the law. But when you say obligating event, an event which creates an obligation wherein the entity has no realistic alternative but to settle it. Government has changed the law. It's an event but it has no obligation. Don't you think I can instead of training I can hire new employees. It means the retraining cost can be avoided. What did I say? There is no realistic alternative but to settle it. Don't you think you have a realistic alternative? Instead of settling, instead of training the employees, I can obviously hire new employees who are already trained. Yeah, so there is no need to create any kind of provision for such kind of retraining cost. Is recognized only when the recognition for provisions are met. A restructuring provision does not include cost of retaining or equating the continuing staff. The expenditure of training staff related to further conduct of the business are not liabilities for restructuring. Such expenditure recognized on the basis as if they arose independently of such at the balance sheet date. No expenditure has been incurred. No provision is required. The solution is not 100% uh, similar. It is going on restructuring. But this retraining part, what they are talking about, no retraining has taken place because of change in regulation. Of course, there is no present obligation. Clear, my friends? So, okay. So, this is our end of our group 2. Paper 5 Advanced Accounting RTP Discussion. I hope you would have enjoyed this session. Thank you very much for being with me and all the very best for clearing both the groups of CA Inter. See you in CA Final. Thank you.